Hi guys, so if you didn't already know and you don't follow me on TikTok or Instagram, in January I was diagnosed with stage 2 Hodgkin's lymphoma which is a type of blood cancer. Since I started my journey, well since I shared it which was um, a little bit after I got diagnosed, I didn't tell everyone straight away, I've been sharing my journey and um, answering as many questions as I can on TikTok mainly but also my Instagram account but I kind of wanted to sit down and do a more in-depth video to answer some of the questions that I've had. I've obviously recently shaved my head and I'm going to put my wig on to do most of this video but I just wanted to show you what I look like with no wig. <laughs> I have my pick line here. Um, I haven't really had any questions about my pick line but to be honest I don't think I've spoken about it very much. It's basically just like this tube that goes into my main vein and then I can have my treatment from it so that I'm not having like I'm not being cannulated all the time um, because that can like really ruin your veins and it just does it does just make everything so much easier even though it's a little bit uncomfortable to get. I'm gonna put my wig on to film um, the rest of this video because I actually only have half an hour to film this so let's hope I don't ramble too much. It's probably a good thing because otherwise I'd be talking for about two hours. Um, but I do have two wigs. This is my main one that I wear most of the time. I did a whole TikTok video about this wig and like where I got it from. Um, and I'm sort of happy to do a more in-depth like video about my hair and everything. Um, but I fucking love this wig so much. It's literally like my dream hair. <laughs> I'm honestly like, I don't mind being bold to be fair. Like I, I, one of the things I will say is that it was one of the things that I was most... Oh my God, you made me a gym. Do you want to say hi to the YouTube video? Hi, YouTube video. Thank you for doing that. I've got a gym. <laughs> um, it's it's like 12 o'clock, but <laughs> you know, when, when I was having <laughs> my symptoms, I couldn't just have one drink because one of my symptoms of cancer was pain when drinking alcohol. Shouldn't have obviously sent me to the doctors, but it didn't. Anyway, what was I talking about? Losing my hair. Yeah, when I first found out that I was going to be having like, well, that I had cancer and that I was going to be having chemotherapy, literally the first thing that I thought of was, oh my God, like losing my hair is going to be the hardest part. And it honestly hasn't. Like I haven't been upset really once. The only time I got upset was when... <laughs> I was on a walk with my mum literally like I'd only worn my wig out once before this and it was to the hospital so no one's really going to say anything to you in the hospital but then I was walking across the bridge with my mum on this walk and this man came up to me and said if you don't hold on to your wig then it will blow away or something because he was wearing a hat and he and I was like okay I'll hold on to it and then he kind of walked away and I was like it just really sucked because it's like I don't know if he was trying to I don't know what he was trying to say I don't know if he was trying to be funny and like oh my god you've got long hair it looks like you've got a wig on or whether he actually could tell that I had a wig on um but I had a hat on so I don't really know like it, it definitely I mean my wig's brilliant anyway but I don't know how he would have known really um but yeah that sucked a little bit yeah this is like my dream hair now I can have my dream hair <laughs> in wig form and I don't have to do anything with it I literally just put it on my head and it's there but yeah i'm gonna carry on the video with with hair on um because like i say i've only got half an hour to film this so as soon as as soon as this is filmed i'm literally out the door but i went on my instagram and asked if anyone had any questions um there's also a few questions that i've had um on tiktok as well people have private messaged me i didn't know i i didn't realize i had all of these messages on tiktok that I'd never seen before because I didn't realise you could send people messages without them following you. So I've gone through a few of those as well. And then obviously the ones that I got on Instagram, but I'm happy to do like more videos. I think I'd like to come on TikTok, uh, sorry, YouTube more because you can go in a little bit more depth um, with your answers to things. And I was doing like daily vlogs and stuff before um, in the summer, me and Charlie did that quite a lot. So I do miss it. So I will be coming back onto YouTube. TikTok's where you can see like I do, I do like daily vlogs on TikTok. I'm uploading like probably three times a week. It's honestly what's been keeping me sane. And I know that some people wouldn't want to post on TikTok. And I mean, to be fair, when I got diagnosed, I only had like 40,000 followers and now I have like 70,000. So obviously it has grown and I want to keep making TikToks, but I kind of felt like I had to anyway. And not that I had to, because I enjoy it, but 
I already I was already making TikToks before, so it was like, well, I kind of got to tell people what's going on and like why I'm not making why I've not made any videos in like a month. It's actually asked me about symptoms. I don't think I might get onto it, but if you want like a more in depth detail about my diagnosis and my symptoms, then I'm sort of happy to to film that video as well. But I didn't really know like what to sort of first do, so I thought I'll just ask people what they want to know. One of the first things was have you struggled with your weight during your chemotherapy and this was like one of the things that i actually asked and i felt really stupid asking before i started chemo because some people say that you put on loads of weight because of the steroids that you're on and some people have lost um a lot of weight as well i'm only i've only done four cycles so i do well no i've done two four sessions two cycles and i have six cycles um of chemotherapy and i've done two um and so far i've lost like a little bit of weight um but nothing crazy i've probably lost about like four kilograms or something since when i started but i haven't been drinking very much alcohol i mean i say that and i've literally got a fucking gin here um to <laughs> it's bank holiday weekend but i've really like generally not been drinking very much alcohol and my appetite has definitely gone more like savory and vegetables and things like like actual meals rather than like snacks and sweet stuff so i don't know if that's got something to do with it and i don't think i'm on a massive dose dosage of steroids either another question that i had is what stage was your cancer my cancer was stage two which i honestly couldn't believe because i'd had my symptoms for a year and to have my symptoms for a year and only be stage two i thought was really lucky um i know other people that were stage two only sort of had symptoms for about six months maybe even less and then other people that i know uh, had symptoms for longer than me uh, sorry for shorter than me and were stage four so it's just one of the things i've learned about cancer no matter what type you have like i have hodgkin's lymphoma which is the most common in people my age the symptoms the stages the side effects like it all completely varies from person to person there's no like blue print for everyone um and i was just really lucky enough to have only been stage two um there was a point where they thought that it could have been in my bone marrow which would have made it stage four and honestly that like that would have been really tough because my cancer has actually gone like i don't have any tumors anymore I got that news a few days ago, but they obviously have to carry on with treatment because you can't see cells in a scan. So if those cells aren't killed, then it could obviously escalate and turn into tumours again, which is why they have to carry on with the treatment. Okay. Um, what does it feel like being on chemo? My neighbour actually asked me this today <laughs> and I honestly can't describe the feeling. Like actually having it, it's so weird because you can literally feel like the poison going around your body and it's something that I cannot put into words and I don't think anyone can put into words unless you've experienced it and again it's probably different between a person to person but for me it's just like instantly I'm just like I can feel this like ugh. even thinking about it now makes me feel sick and I get saline flushed as well every time I have like anything put in me or like taken out of me and when you get a saline flush you can often taste the saline and smell it so anything like that smells like saline <laughs> makes me feel so sick now because it reminds me of like when chemo is going through my body um but generally like the instant sort of effect of it is that you just feel so sick and nauseous and they do give you like anti-sickness tablets but like nothing's gonna make you feel normal like there's nothing that can take away completely the side effects but yeah that's kind of what it feels like in terms of the side effects and stuff it literally just varies from time to time a lot of people get tired um i'm definitely tired for the first few days after chemo but generally like my i'm not i'm not like sleeping all day or anything like that so yeah what have um someone says have you struggled with infection i've been getting them every time in between chemo it's really common when you have chemotherapy basically all your bad cells are obviously killed but all your good cells are too um i don't know the science behind it or anything like that really but your immune system is completely like zonked like you basically don't have an immune system which to me feels crazy because i haven't had any type of infection my sister's literally in the house with tonsillitis at the minute i haven't picked up anything i've had a bit of a sniffly nose but i think it's because hay fever season has just started because my eyes are starting to hurt a little bit now as well said was you taken seriously regarding your symptoms upon first seeking medical advice i was i was really lucky i've had so many messages from people saying that they've not been so 
lucky and they've kept on going back to the doctors and they're just like, I don't think anything's wrong with you. I mean, obviously a doctor's a doctor and you can think like, oh, I've got a swollen lymph node in my neck, but that could, that could genuinely just be an infection. And the thing with Hodgkin's lymphoma is the, the symptoms can be put down to so many other things, which is why it often gets missed um and you don't think about that it could be cancer but also it it could be so many other things what i went to the doctors for um was actually my cough so i had a tumor in i had tumors in my neck and then i had a tumor in my chest and the tumor in my chest was causing a constant cough so i had this constant cough for literally like a year but it would just kind of be like a <coughs> And it would just be like that, but constantly. And it would it would get really bad at night as well. And I just put it down to so many other things. Um, but I went to doctors and the I saw an advanced nurse practic practitioner and she was lovely. And she was just a bit like, mm, I'm not sure what this is. So she put me on an inhaler. So I went on the inhaler and then she literally, it was like, just as we were kind of like finishing up, she was like, I'm just gonna refer you for an X-ray um, just to be sure. So I went and had an x-ray, which was literally like two seconds. You just like stand in front of this thing and it's done. Um, and then from the x-ray, they called me and they were like, we've seen something that we don't like. Um, it, we don't think it's anything to worry about. It's probably just an infection. But then I had to have a CT scan. And then from my CT scan, they could see that there was a tumour in my chest. Da, 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 da. I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I was quite lucky that I was taken seriously the first time. But I also think the fact that I'd had the cough for so long um had i have gone maybe even and said i've had a cough for six months maybe they would have wouldn't have picked it up the same i was just very lucky and the nurse that i saw was lovely i actually saw her again because then i went and <laughs> i thought i had an ear infection but it was actually just like wax in my ear um and she was lovely and i saw her again and she was like i'm so glad that i obviously referred you how has your experience with medical staff been i cannot tell you how amazing nurses are like the nurses that i have been every single nurse that i i meet is just incredible and just just gets me just knows they're just so empathetic and a lot of them haven't been through it themselves so they can't be sympathetic but like the empathy that they well i don't know if they have what they've been through obviously but the empathy that they have for you is just like oh so nice and they'll do anything like i got told by this doctor long story short i got told by this doctor that we wouldn't get my scan results back and I was going to have to wait until like Tuesday to get my scan results back. But I was meant to have chemotherapy on Tuesday and that chemotherapy was going to determine if we're carrying on with treatment that I'm already on but dropping a drug or if we're going to like intensify and I'm going to be in hospital. And I'm like, I can't turn up on Tuesday knowing if my cancer's gone or not and then like jump into a whole new treatment re regime. And also, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> so me and my mum like went and spoke to one of the, well, two of the nurses, the lymphoma nurse nurses that I've obviously met like a few times before and they completely sorted out for me got my pet scan pushed forward like checked the results gave me their number all the rest of it um so I got my results literally like hours after I had my pet scan which it was gonna be like five days afterwards and there's just little things that obviously you appreciate so much and if I could I would do give everything to them like it's literally my dream of mine to be able to be wealthy enough in the future to do so much with the amazing charities and the amazing people that have literally made such an impact on my life and even my consultant because I got diagnosed in Southampton and then I moved to Nottingham to do my treatment and equally both both places are, have amazing staff and the consultant that I saw in um, Southampton knew the consultant that I had in Southampton in Nottingham so he like hooked me up with the, the like one of the best consultants for lymphoma in the country apparently he hooked me up with him and um my, yeah my consultant's amazing and I I'm so blown away because you hear all this stuff in the news about people not being able to get GP appointments and how the NHS is failing but it's like so many of them still turn up to work every single day and make you feel like so lucky to have the NHS so um, that's definitely something that I took for granted before and I'll never take for granted again and I also think as well it's quite nice because now I don't get angry about the fact that I'm going to pay taxes again I'm like I'm happy to pay taxes if it's going to pay for someone's chemotherapy treatment that's how I look at it I'm like every time I pay like 400 pounds in tax I'm like well that's paid for like a bit of someone's chemotherapy treatment that's how I'm going to look at it from now on message i'll just read out the whole message it says your videos are such a comfort and so positive just wanted to say thank you 
I'm not normally cheesy, but my mum recently got diagnosed with cancer and starts her first chemo tomorrow. Your videos have really helped me. Thank you for posting as much as you do. Um, all the best with your treatment. P.S. You look amazing with your head shaved. And I just wanted to address that message because I get so many messages like that from people that have having cancer or have got someone close to them having cancer, like their mum and their dad. And for me, like obviously, I wanted to raise awareness about blood cancer and the symptoms and getting it checked out. But I also thought it was so important for me to film things like my daily vlog to show people that cancer isn't all about like being in the hospital and being sick and being bold and all the rest of it like you believe you you know at this age you all I my only reference point is like my sister's keeper and the faults in our stars and that's what you think cancer is when you first get diagnosed but like generally my life is actually better with cancer like it is really a blessing in disguise because I'm just such a nicer more positive I have a whole new outlook on life and I think it's important for me. I mean, I loved making videos before all of this anyway, so I'm just continuing what I was doing before. But I find it really helpful for me to get it off my chest. But I also know that it's it's nice for other people to see that um, it cancer doesn't have to be all about having cancer and you can still have a really, really happy life and um, look forward to life after cancer and I get so many messages about my positive mindset and my mum thinks that that's what, why I was so lucky with getting rid of it um, as much as I have and getting through it so well because I haven't had any problems like even all my blood tests have come back so positive like there's really not been a very much of a bump in the road I've been so lucky and I think positive mindset definitely helps and it sets you up for those um, negative moments that might be in the future uh, re you really even though I, there was never a doubt in my mind that I was going to die from this cancer because it is so treatable it does make you think like wow we really just do have one life and we don't know what's going to happen so like let's just do what makes us happy and that's exactly why I do as much content as I do because not only do I enjoy it but I know that it is comforting to other people because I've had messages to say so someone asked me a question about what I did to keep my hair for four rounds of treatment and um any tips or tricks honestly no I didn't do anything I just it was falling out more than you can imagine and I didn't really film any videos of me like pulling my hair out but you would wake up every single morning and hair would be all over the pillow all over the bed I couldn't even wash it because I'd be like washing it and then I'd brush it and then like before I could even go back to brush it again there'd be more and it was falling out and it was getting all matted and it might have not looked too bad like if you'd seen me out and about but like I definitely knew that I had a big bold patch at the back of my head and I had like hair all over my clothes so I didn't do anything and then I got fed up with it and I started to hate it and actually shaving my head even though it was scary and I wouldn't have chosen it it was it is very empowering and I kind of like it now like I quite, quite like having a bald head and I like that I can wear my wig as well and like be my alter ego <laughs> a message kind of a bit similar to what I've just been saying but hey I just wanted to give you a message as I admire your positivity I was diagnosed with cancer a couple of months ago and I found it so reassuring watching your TikToks um that I'm also being so normal finding positives at such a shit time I'm hoping once I finish treatment that I can use the, my diagnosis to spread awareness as being so young you never think you always think never me or the best of your treatment that's so true you always think it's never going to be me and I think it's quite almost good that I al already had a bit of a following on TikTok before I had treatment because there will be people that have either follow me or saw me on their for you page and they're like oh my god like I know that people were shocked that it was me because it was like I don't know like obviously people went to school with me and knew me through college or uni or whatever but when you like see someone on TikTok that's the same age as you and I went through all that I went through like the abortion uni breakups weight loss like all the other things that I've made videos about and then that same girl that went through that also had cancer it I think it just hit home for a lot of people and I don't want to scare anyone or like upset anyone but I hope that um it can kind of prepare anyone that might go through it in the future that maybe saw me I don't really know like I don't really know what I'm trying to say with that but I am just living proof that it can literally happen to anyone 
and it was quite like fucking hell like if it was going to happen to anyone it was going to be me like <laughs> that's kind of what i thought when i got it someone was sent, sent me this big message about like the pain when drinking alcohol and i have spoken about this on my tiktok and there's also quite i worked with like a media agency to get it pushed out into newspapers because when i had this pain when drinking alcohol there was nothing out there that answered my question to why do i get pain when drinking alcohol and had i have seen my video or seen my article that explained this is I, this is diagnosed me with hodgkin's lymphoma and then i looked at all the other symptoms i would have put all the links together so much sooner but as a young person you just think like oh maybe i'm just allergic to alcohol or maybe i've just got an intolerance to it and the last thing you want to do is like stop drinking so you just carry on drinking and I used to go on like if I was going on a night out I'd like dread the fact that I was about to drink and I know it sounds silly because you think like well just don't drink but obviously I wanted to drink like I was out with my mates I'm 22 years old like I want to go out and have a drink so I just would but then I would always have that anxiety like how's it going to feel today and like Charlie used to say to me it's just psychological like don't think about it and I wouldn't think about it and then it would still always come and I actually have had a few comments on my TikTok saying that nurses don't get told that pain when drinking alcohol could be a symptom of lymphoma. Um, and um, I think like a lot of staff that I've told about it, like even a couple of nurses that I was like, yeah, I've got this cough and I've also got pain when drinking alcohol. They were like, oh, I don't see how that would be linked. And if you Google like the symptoms of it, pain when drinking alcohol is like always at the bottom of the list um and it's definitely not a symptom for everyone it's probably like not not as common as the other symptoms which is why it's not spoken about but it is such a massive red flag um so i don't know if that's why if you went to the doctors and said i've got pain when drinking alcohol they wouldn't be able to tell you that it was hodgkin's lymphoma because some of them might not have known um but that's why i spread so much awareness about it as a party girl as a drinker i think one of the articles is like party loving girl <laughs> thinks she's allergic to alcohol and she's got cancer <laughs> but it's so nice to be able to have a gin and tonic and not have the fucking pain anymore like i i just love it <laughs> i'm definitely not going back to like full-on drinking because i never want to have a hangover in my life ever again after having chemotherapy because chemotherapy is just like a hangover on steroids but it is just nice to be able to like go around to someone's house or meet up with my friend for a gin and tonic and like enjoy it I hope that answered some of your questions like i say i'm more than happy to um do another video about like hair loss or my diagnosis or anything like that i've spoken about it so many times so it might sound a little bit like she's not very emotional about it when i first started talking about it i couldn't even say the word cancer um but i've just i've told the story so many times now that i'm so used to it but obviously not um not always answering everyone's questions so i do try and reply to as many messages as i can like i promise i do um but sometimes it's just really <laughs> overwhelming um and obviously thank you so much to everyone that has message me or commented on my video uh, of just positive stuff you know like the positive messages do mean so much and it's just like really reassuring to know and and um that everyone thinks i'm doing really well so yeah um hopefully i'll be filming some more youtube videos have i got anything planned exciting not really i think me and charlie in terms of like life after cancer i'm gonna go and stay with my she's actually my great auntie but she lives in the Cotswolds um so we're gonna go and stay with her like after I've finished my treatment in July um which will be really nice and then me and my mum have booked to go to P see Peter K in August which I'm so excited for I will oh my god it was a fucking nightmare to try and get those tickets but I don't know how we managed to bag them but we did um because the only dates that we had left was like the end of 2024 but I managed to find these tickets um that just got released so thank god we're gonna do that and then like me and Charlie our anniversary and birthdays are both in like autumn and winter so i'll be better by then and we'll be able to do some fun stuff then and then 2024 is all about going on lots of holidays <laughs> but really like the biggest thing for me is i've never been so busy having cancer i've got so much going on like my tiktok um, i'm doing these drawing like these drawings of people's houses which takes up a lot of time obviously i'm trying to run a business um deskware and it's just been lovely like honestly i'll never forget this time a little bit emotional now. <laughs> I'll never forget this time in my life and 
I think like lockdown taught me that I did fuck all in lockdown to benefit my future self and I had all that time and I see cancer a little bit as like a second chance of that it's like I have all this time on my hands obviously when I'm ill I can't really do very much but most of the week in my second week I have so much time where I've got no responsibilities so let's just put all of my energy into building a better future for myself after this wake-up call but yeah thank you guys um cheers to easter 